Now to some very welcome news on one of our News 4 family members. Some of you have been wondering, where has Wendy Rieger been? Well, today we can report that Wendy has been off the air, recovering from open heart surgery. Everything went well, and she's going to join us live in just a moment. Yes, but let's start now with Doreen Gensler. She sat down with Wendy before the operation, and she talked with her about her condition and the warning signs, Doreen, that she admitted that she ignored. That's right. Hi there, Leon and Pat. Wendy says she's feeling great 12 days out from surgery. She even walked a mile a week after the operation. I talked with Wendy at her beautiful mountain home in Rappahannock County, her working from home set that's so familiar, before she had the surgery. And she was happy to share what she's learned from this experience. So the doctor said, your heart is racing. And he said, it's going 130 beats a minute. And he, I said, oh, wh what's it supposed to be? And he said, like 60. I was like, oh, <laughs> really? That's how Wendy's journey began with a routine checkup a couple of years ago. She had atrial fibrillation or AFib. And when she saw a cardiologist, she learned it could dislodge a blood clot and cause a stroke. There was a procedure to reestablish her heart rhythm, plus blood thinner medication and cardiology checkups after that, and everything was okay until recently. I'm sitting here after broadcasting from home, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden I felt poom. It's like the drum solo in Inagata de Vida. You know, it's like boom, 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 boom. Turns out Wendy's mitral valve was in bad shape. Shredded is how she describes it. She's known since she was a teenager that she had mitral valve prolapse. Uncommon, but not exactly rare. After yet another AFib episode, so she learned she needed I surgery. Him and he looks at all of my uh, films and everything that they've taken. And he said, you know, anatomically, it's just, I don't feel comfortable doing minimally mm -hmm. invasive. So he said, I'm gonna have to go do open heart what? What? The combination of the atrial fibrillation and the progression of her mitral valve prolapse to, to a leaky valve started to cause a lot of symptoms. She was short of breath. She had a cough. She had migraine headaches, which can be related to mitral valve prolapse. And she had a lot of fatigue. Dr. Paul Massimiano was one of two surgeons who repaired Wendy's heart. He fixed the valve. His partner focused on the AFib to restore a normal heart rhythm. It's sort of a well choreographed ballet between the electrical part of the operation and the structural part repairing the mitral valve. Wendy's surgery took four hours and recovery will take time. But Wendy's home from the hospital now, walking around and feeling stronger every day. She realizes now that she ignored some warning signs. When her heart felt fluttery, she assumed it was hormones. Her annual physicals and mammograms did not identify her serious issue. The things that make us female is what we, we worry about. We don't worry about the universal systems that we all have. And that's the wake-up call in this, is listen to your heart. If it's doing something weird, it doesn't take anything for a doctor to diagnose a weird rhythm. Mm -hmm. You can even get blood pressure cuffs and all this other kind of right. stuff that tells you, and get them on Amazon. Dr. Massimiano says her long-term prognosis is excellent. Uh, Wendy is a terrific patient. She, she's very smart and she's enormously entertaining. So I wouldn't exactly say it was fun to take care of her, but it was definitely a pleasure. And Wendy has every reason to expect her heart repairs will lead to a stronger, longer lasting future. Yeah. That's why I feel like there's me before uh -huh. and then there'll be me after. That's how, I mean, really, I feel like this is not something I'm, I'm afraid of. This is actually something I'm excited uh -huh. because I feel like it's going to repair something I never knew needed repairing. And look who's with us now, Wendy. Uh, here's that. That was you before uh, your surgery. This is you live now. Mm -hmm. how, how is it possible for you to look this good just 12 days after surgery? You know, it's diuretics. <laughs> 
uh, you know, they, they pump you with so many diuretics. I'm actually thin, you know, it, it helps. Also, you know, it's also, I think, important to be entertaining during open heart surgery. That's what I strive for. I, I just, I'm so glad, thank you for doing this because I, I wanted to let people know I still work there. Someone on Facebook today posted, um, oh, I'm, I, I just thought you got canned. <laughs> oh, great. No. no, no, just open heart surgery. I'm still employed. <laughs> well, and, and a lot of people, you, you, you told me earlier that, uh, that a lot of people are, feel like, think that you had a heart attack or something and r were rushed to the hospital. Yeah. That is not the case, is it? No, no, no. This is something we've been watching for two and a half years. My uh, cardiologist, Jonathan Yeager, uh, has been watching this, and we've been doing echoes. And then this summer with those two episodes of AFib, he said, you know, it's, it's getting bad. You need to go see Dr. Massimiano. So this was controlled. It was calm. And we scheduled this. It wasn't anything emergency, and it wasn't a scare. Uh, it was something that was, I just didn't tell anybody because I think when you're dealing with open heart surgery, which you have to wrap your head around. Um, I, I just felt like it was bad luck to talk about it until, you know, I, I opened my eyes afterwards. I, I think people can understand that. Well, well, and people are shocked, and then you have to manage uh, their reactions when you're uh, you're dealing with it yourself. How, how are you? How are you feeling? What's the what's the recovery been like? Well, the recovery was interesting. The first four or five days in the hospital, the first four days in ICU were tough uh, just because I think the exhaustion from, uh, I wasn't prepared for that. And I, ha I mean, I felt like a, a building had fallen on me. It, the exhaustion was, was crippling and I, I wasn't prepared for it psychologically. But, you know, the nursing staff there was just, oh my God, was so helpful and they really keep your spirits up. And then once you get home, I was stunned on day seven that uh, right before right before the anniversary, the one week anniversary, that how I was feeling. And Dr. Massimiano said, "Don't baby yourself. Get out there and walk." So when I called him because I, I was having a bad morning, and he said, "Get up, go outside and walk because they want you up and walking because of blood clots, and your lungs are not, you know, are not fully in sync with your heart after all of this surgery, and they want to keep them clear." So they really encourage you move it. So on the fifth, uh, on the anniversary Friday, uh, one, one week later, I went and walked a mile with a friend. And I, I mean, it wasn't fast, but, but, but I did it and, and it helped. It also helped that Hanley sent me pies from <laughs> Pie Sisters that day that I ate with a spoon. And I thought might be a good time because with my luck, I'll be the one that gains weight <laughs> after having open heart surgery. And what's the, uh, we, uh, your, your heart surgeon, by the way, I think has a crush on you, but he says, he says your prognosis is, oh, is isn't he adorable? Yes. Uh, your, your prognosis is great. When, when can we uh, hope for you to come back to work, Wendy? We all want to know, including the, the people who are filling in for you. But yeah. I, right? I know that. I remember every, <laughs> filling in for everyone's maternity leave. Right. Okay. So I always say this is this is my baby. This is my having a baby. Okay. Uh, I uh, it's six. He, they, six weeks is the first one because you have to go into cardiac rehab because you've got to get. You know, my heart's now working closer to a hundred percent for the first time probably in my life. So you've got to get the body and the heart and the lungs all in sync uh, and then you've also got to just recover from the trauma of it you know it's but it, Dr. Massimano was funny last week I texted him and said um, can I have a half a glass of wine and he said how big is the glass <laughs> <laughs> this guy has seen into my heart he's, yes, he, and he's, he knows me he's gotten to know you in just a short time <laughs> when can you have a glass of wine <laughs> Well, I, I, I had a half a glass of wine last week. I, okay. I can't drink until New Year's Eve. Okay. Well, it's, so, uh, it's not that celebrate. far away. It's not that far away. No, it's not. It's not. Small price to pay. Well, thanks for yeah. telling me because you know I was going to send you some. <laughs> Wendy, we're so glad to see send you. It. You know, send it. it. I have a wine refrigerator. <laughs> send it. It's coming. You look great, Wendy. We're so glad to see you and to see Thank you, you so happy Thank you. and Thank you. Um, so full of life as you always are. And we miss you. Oh, thank you. I miss you guys so much. I miss you and I love you. I'm going to start crying. I miss you and I love you and it's so good. That's another thing. You get really weepy when you have this. Oh, no. <laughs> but I really miss you and I love you and, and thank you. Well, thank you for, you know, 
walking me through this. No. Well, all, all of our me. best wishes for a speedy recovery, Wendy. We're really, we're really happy to have this Thanks. in your rearview mirror. Yeah, but we're just worried if we can handle a 100% yeah. Wendy now. <laughs> Don't know if we can handle all that. Take good care. <laughs> all right, friend. be you careful, hon. Fasten your seatbelts. <laughs> <laughs> we're ready. You got it. Love you.